بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد أيها الإخوة الأخوات respected brothers and sisters of Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته we praise Allah subhanahu wa taala we seek His divine aid we seek His assistance we seek His forgiveness whosoever Allah as well guides and can misguide and whosoever Allah as well misguides and can guide I be witness that none is right to be worshipped except Allah Azza wa Jal alone, without any partner, and I testify that the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is his final prophet and messenger. As for precision, inshaAllah, we continue our reading of the Risala al Wasail al Mufida, Lil Hayati Sa'ida, by the scholar of Al Islam, Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al Sa'idi, Rahimah wa Ta'ala. The title, which you are all familiar with by now, is The Beneficial Means to Leading a Happy Life. In this Risala, the Shaykh discusses many means how we go about achieving a happy life. He discusses the Shari'i means, the means afforded to us by our Deen, and he also discusses other um, natural means which people have at their disposal. However, the Shaykh also discusses in this Risala, um, how to ward off grief and sorrow and how to deal with events which are of a troubling nature. And so he discusses uh, with us in this Risala the means how we can go about removing grief and sorrow from our lives while like ham. The point we stopped on um, last week was the point uh, where the Sheikh mentioned في أكبر الأسباب لإنشراح الصدر وتمأنينته. The greatest means which leads to an expansive chest, right? Uh, an expansive chest and contentment. Something that would give you ease in life and would breed contentment. And the greatest means to achieve this, uh, he mentioned to us al ikthar min dhikrillah. It is to remember Allah subhanahu wa taala often. And we mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal has created within us uh, the ability to only be fulfilled when the heart recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the heart remembers Allah Azza wa Jal. That no matter how we try to fill this void that many people um, experience and people um, seek to fulfill this void through many means. Allah Azza wa Jal's sunnah, he's um, method is that he has only left true contentment in recognizing him subhanahu wa ta'ala and also in remembering him often. As Allah mentions in the verse in Surah Al-Ra'ad, Allah mentions أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Only by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will the hearts find rest. And this is the greatest means that leads to contentment an expansive chest. The second uh, point he mentioned under this chapter is that the person should speak about the favors and the bounties of Allah Azza wa Jalla upon him, which is apparent, and those bounties which is internal. To speak about these bounties and to give gratitude uh, to Allah Azza wa Jalla for them, it leads to contentment, it breeds contentment. Um, the next point the Sheikh mentions, and he says, وَمِنْ أَنْفَعِ الْأَشْيَاءَ فِي هَذَا الْمَوْضِي And for amongst the most beneficial means with regard to this particular topic, meaning uh, contentment and gaining an expansive chest, he mentions الاستعمال أو استعمال ما أرشد إليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الصحيح حيث قال he mentions it is found in the hadith where in the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, mentions to us انظروا إلى من هو أسفل منكم ولا تنظروا إلى من هو فوقكم فإنه أجدر أن لا تزدروا نعمة الله عليكم And here the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he guides us towards the method whereby his ummah and human beings achieve contentment in life. And so the Prophet says, look at those who are lower than you. Meaning, those people who are not experiencing the bounties which you are experiencing. 
And do not look at those who are above you in terms of what Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon them of riches and beauty and honor and status. And the Prophet says, the reason being, فَإِنَّهُ أَجْدَرُ أَن لَا تَجْدَرُ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Because this will not make you trivialize and belittle the bounties of Allah Azza wa Jal upon you. That this will not make you deem whatever you are experiencing of bounties as small. When you look at those who are um, below you. In terms of afia, as the Shaykh mentioned, in terms of well-being and whatever follows it of good health and of riches and of status and of health and so on and so forth but rather look at those people who are below you look at those people who are below you because this will actually make you realize the great fadl the great bounty which Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon you which Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon you and so this is a great hadith that a person must place, as Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentions here, فَإِنَّ الْعَبْدِ إِذَا نَصَبَ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ هَذَا الْمَلْحَظْ الْجَلِيلِ That he should place this teaching in front of him. He should uh, place this teaching in front of him and give importance to it. He should apply it. And he should remind himself of it. Uh, for when he does this, رَآهُ يَفُوقُ جَمْءًا كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْخَلْكِ فِي الْعَافِيَةِ وَالتَّوَابِعِهَا Because when he does this, he will realize that he precedes many of Allah Azza wa Jal's creation, human beings, in terms of afia, in terms of well-being, and whatever comes about as a result of it. Meaning health and wealth and honor, we mentioned, and status, and so on and so forth. When you look at those below you, it will make you realize that Allah Azza wa Jal has granted you uh, many forms of goodness. وَفِي الرِّزْقِ وَتَوَابِعِهِ مَهْمَا بَلَغَتْ بِالْحَالِ And he says, and whatever Allah Azzawajal has bestowed upon you in terms of risk, that no matter what condition you find yourself in, whether it be a difficult situation, um, and a situation where you are faced with some form of poverty or so on and so forth, it will not make you trivialize the bounties of Allah Azzawajal upon you when you have this approach. When you look at those who are below you and not those who are above you. So the Prophet tells us, uh, look at those who are below you in terms of dunya. And don't look at those who are above you in terms of dunya. Right? Because that will make you compare yourself. And you'll say, you know, why was he given such and such? And I was not given such and such. Whereas when you look at those below you, it makes you um, grateful for that which Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon you. And so he mentions, when the servant does this, غير ممن هو دون فيه. He says, and then when he does this, um, his قلق, his anxiety, and his grief and his sorrow, and his sadness will then be removed. Because he is afflicted with some form of um, trial in terms of his health, in terms of his um, wealth. Um, when he looks at those below him, it will remove the sadness that he feels at the loss which he experienced. And as a result of this, his happiness and his joy for what he experiences of afi, of well being, um, it will increase. And he will recognize the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him and he will realize that he has been given the upper hand uh, with regards to many other people in terms of what Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed for him in terms of rizq. He then mentions وَكُلَّمَا طَالَ تَأَمُّلُ الْعَبْدِ بِنِعْمِ اللَّهِ ظَاهِرَ وَالْبَاطِنَ وَالدِّينِيَّةِ وَدُنْيَوِيَّةِ رَأَى رَبَّهُ قَدْ أَعْطَاهُ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا وَدَفَ عَنُهُ شُرُورًا مُتَعَدِّدًا He says that so every time the person closely investigates and monitors the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him, those which are apparent and those which are internal, the bounties which is diniyah, 
the bounty which is religious and this is the greatest form of bounty the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you to Islam and the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal has made you a Muslim that if you were trial with regards to health and wealth if your deen is still intact then that is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so he mentions the bounties of deen and the bounties of dunya he will find that his Rabb his Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him khayran kathiran has given him many forms of goodness وَدَفَعَنُوا شُرُورًا شُرُورًا متعددة. and Allah Azza wa Jal has also averted from him and removed from him many forms of um, evil right you experience some form of loss um, there are people who have lost more than you whether it be with regards to life or health or wealth وَلَا شَكَّ أَنَّ هَذَا يَدْفَعُ الْهُمُومُ وَالْهُمُومُ وَيُوجِبُ الْفَرْحُ وَالسُّرُورُ and he says and there is no doubt that this this mindset of looking at those who are below you right this type of mindset it um, it moves and it removes um, grief and it removes sadness and sorrow and it brings about farh it brings about happiness and it brings about joy which is the objective of each and every single individual and so contentment is key contentment is key to be content with that which Allah Azza wa Jal has granted you brings about an expansive chest and it brings about um, what the Shaykh refers to as Tuma'nina it brings about Tuma'nina the next um, major means the Shaykh discusses it is fil asbab al mujiba li surur wa zawal al ham wal gham the means which bring about happiness and removes grief and sorrow so what means can we take in order to achieve happiness and what means can we take in order to avert and ward off um, despair and sadness and sorrow the Shaykh mentions Rahimullah ta'ala wa bina asbab al mujiba li surur wa zawal al ham wal gham he says from amongst the means uh, which bring about happiness and bring about the removal of ham, distress and worry, wal gham and sadness. He says, "As-sa'yu fi izalat al-asbab al-jaliba lil-humum wa fi tahsil al-asbab al-jaliba lil-suru." He says that the abd must strive to remove the means which cause grief. And he must strive with um, he must strive um, in taking towards the means which bring about happiness and so this is an important point that the Sheikh mentions here um, and that is taking the means taking the means to achieve a particular objective is that you must not be as the Prophet Muhammad says wala ta'jiz do not be lazy and do not render yourself incapable. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. The hadith we covered. Be eager to know those things which benefit you and be eager to take towards those things which benefit you. Wala ta'jiz. And the Prophet said, Wala ta'jiz. And do not be lazy. Which is kasal al as the Sheikh um, defined it. Which is the um, laziness which harms a person. So you must be proactive in taking towards means which cause happiness and means which ward off um, grief and sorrow. And so um, if there are particular things which makes one unhappy, then he has to take towards the means which, which would cause him to not become unhappy. And a great means which Allah Azza wa Jalla has made, which causes unhappiness, it is sins. Sins causes um, 
the chest to become restricted. And since it gives rise to despair and gives rise to sorrow. And so, if you know that sins leads to unhappiness, the servant must abstain from sins. And if there is a particular path which leads to happiness, then he must exert himself in order to achieve um, and striving to apply that means in order to achieve happiness. And this is the belief of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah that we see the means as something Allah Azza wa Jal has legislated. That taking the means to obtain something is something which Allah Azza wa Jal legislated for us in order to obtain the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person, um, for example, a person is ill and so the person uh, goes to a doctor and the doctor prescribes medicine and the person takes the medicine and he believes that Allah Azza wa Jal created the means. Right? The medicine does not cure in of itself, but rather the medicine is a means to a cure. And Allah Azza wa Jal created this means and he places his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the person must take towards the means. And this is the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We don't believe that a person can just lie back and witness the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal unfold and not strive to obtain what he wants or to ward off whatever um, has uh, come about. So he mentioned asa'yu fi izalat al-asbab al-jalib al humum to strive to obtain um, or to ward off those means which uh, give despair and wa fi tahsil al-asbab jalib al surur and also to strive to um, acquire and to implement those means which bring about happiness. And so the Shaykh mentions here how this is done. He says, وَذَلِكَ بِنِسْيَانِ مَا مَضَى عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْمَكَارِهِ الَّتِي لَا يُمْكِنُ رَدُّهَا وَمَعْرِفَةُ أَنَّ إِشْتِغَالَ فِكْرَهُ فِيهَا مِنْ بَابِ الْعَبَثْ وَالْمَحَالِ So he says, with regards to those things which give um, grief and despair, is that the person should forget whatever has transpired. Whatever has happened, has happened, right? There's no way to go back to it and rectify it, right? There's no way to go back to it and to rectify it. So he mentions by forgetting whatever has transpired of um, mishaps, which he can never go back to and fix, and that he should know that him busying him and preoccupying his mind um, with these matters which has passed is min bab al abath wal mahal. It is a meaningless practice to think of events which has passed only opens up the door for shaitan. As the Prophet mentioned, um, say qadar Allahu wa ma shafal. Say what Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed this and what he decreed will happen and it happens. So once you open the door, what if? It opens up the pathway for shaitan to enter upon you and shaitan wants from you to despair and he wants for you to be grieved because there's nothing more beloved to shaitan than a believer that is sorrowful and a believer that grieves. So this is a meaningless practice to think about previous events which happened and then to replay them in your mind. He says, And he says that this is a type of stupidity and this is a form of madness. We ask Allah's job protection. And so he, say, he mentions, فَيُجَاهِدُ قَلْبَهُ أَنِ التَّفَكُّرْ فِيهَا وَكَذَلِكَ يُجَاهِدْ قَلْبَهُ أَنْ قَلْقِهِ لِمَا يَسْتَقْبِلُهُ مِمَّا يُتَوَهَّمُهُ بِنْ فَقْرٍ أَوْ خَوْفٍ أَوْ غَيْرِهِمَا مِنَ الْمَكَارِ الَّتِي يَتَخَيَّلُهَا فِي مُسْتَقْبَلِ حَيَاتِهِ So he mentions that the person must strive. He must strive against his thoughts um, to preoccupy his mind with what has happened in the past. Right? 
And likewise, he should also strive against himself with regards to his anxieties. And anxiety usually comes about as a result of future events, right? If events which have not yet occurred and events which will and must still take place. And so he must strive against his, his mind regarding his anxieties with regards to future events. With regards to those future events, which he perceives will happen. Right? It's a waham. It's not something real. Right? It's wahmiya. It hasn't yet occurred. It's only something which he um, which he perceives in his mind. It has not yet it has not yet occurred. Of faqri, right? Of um, poverty, or khawfin, or a type of fear which will overcome him. Or other than that, um, from amongst the unpleasant um, things which take place. التي يتخيل لها في مستقبل حياته which he has تخيل about which he has a false perception about with regards to um, future events of his life that a person becomes preoccupied a person has a job and mashallah he tries to save but yet he has this overwhelming anxiety that what if one day something happens to me how will I provide for my family? Um, how will I pay my rent? How will I pay this? How will I pay that? And so he becomes preoccupied with this thought. Even though currently he has a job and he is in a, a state of afia, but yet he preoccupies himself with anxieties, right? Of, of faqr, as the Sheikh mentioned, of poverty or fear and other um, events. Uh, which are difficult in nature and so um, these are two important points here that the Sheikh mentions uh, with regards to forgetting past events because um, thinking about past events will give rise to grief it will give rise to gham and will give rise to sadness you'll feel as if you missed out on something but the believer says this is what Allah Azza has decreed and where I'm counting now is what Allah Azza wa Jal will for me. And with regards to future events, if a person preoccupies his mind with future events, then this will give rise to qalq. It will give rise to anxiety. And so the Sheikh mentions he should strive against his mind to not think about the past and to not overthink um, regards the future. Because as I say, the art of creating problems is overthinking, right? A person, he overthinks a particular scenario and he has a thousand um, possibilities of what the outcome might be of this particular situation and he plays out all of these situations. But yet the reality is not like this. So as I mentioned, the art of creating problems is overthinking Allahu Musta'an. The Shaykh then mentions Rahimullah Ta'ala فَيَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمُورَ الْمُسْتَقْبَلَ مَجْهُولٌ مَا يَقَعَ فِيهَا مِنْ خَيْرٍ وَشَرٍ وَآمَالٍ وَآلَامٍ And that he should know with regards to his anxieties of future events is that future events um, it is not known to him how it will play out and what will occur of it, of goodness and of shar, of khair wa shar, of goodness and of evil, wa amal wa alam, and of pleasure and pain, right? You have no way to actually know what will happen in the future, right? Good or bad, pleasure or pain. Wa annaha biyadil aziz al hakim, and that these events it lies in the hand of al aziz, of Allah azza wa jal, al aziz. The Almighty, Subhanahu wa Taala, Al Hakim, the All Wise. That what Allah decrees happens, no matter whether you take the means and you exert your efforts. If Allah Azza wa Jalla does not decree for you that particular thing, 
it will not happen. Likewise, Allah Azza wa is Al Hakim. That you think that something is good for you, but in essence it is evil for you. So Allah Azza wa Jal, I'm warding that particular thing that you want so much from you, it is all uh, goes back to and it revolves, uh, um, it revolves around Allah Azza wa Jal's hikmah. And Allah knows what is best and what suits his servant subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَيْسَ بِيَادِ الْعِبَادِ مِنْهَا شَيْءٌ إِلَّا السَّعْيُ فِي تَحْسِيلِ خَيْرَتِهَا And that the servant has no control over these matters. He has no control over these matters. Except that he should strive, except that he should strive to obtain um, what is good for him. That he should strive to obtain what is good for him. And that's all that is in his capability. As for the outcome of this, then that is up to Allah Azza wa Jal. That is up to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَدَفْءُ مَدَرَّتِهَا وَيَعْلَمُ الْعَبْدُ أَنَّهُ إِذَا صَرَفَ فِكْرَهُ أَنْ قَلْقِهِ مِنْ أَجِلْ مُسْتَقْبَلِ أَمْرِهِ And uh, he should strive to the best of his ability of one, to ward off uh, evil things. To ward off evil things. And he should know, the servant, the abd should know, أَنَّهُ إِذَا صَرَفَ فِكْرَهُ عَنْ قَلْقِهِ مِنْ أَجَلِ مُسْتَكْبَلِ أَمْرِهِ وَاتَّكَلَ عَلَى رَبِّي فِي إِسْلَاحِهِ وَطْمَأَنَّ إِلَيْهِ فِي ذَلِكَ إِذَا فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ إِطْمَأَنَّ قَلْبُهُ وَصَلَحَتْ أَحْوَالُهُ وَزَالَ عَنْهُ هَمُّهُ وَقَلْقَهُ طيب So the Sheikh mentioned here that the, the abd, the servant should know that when he diverts his focus and his thoughts um, regarding those things which worry him and concern him regarding his future matters and it depends upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whomsoever places trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will find that Allah azza wa jal will be sufficient for him and the shaykh discusses tawakkul in a separate section inshallah in more depth so the person وَتَكَلَ عَلَى رَبِّي فِي إِسْلَاحِي and he depends upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to obtaining good and with regards to rectifying future events وَطْمَأَنَّ إِلَيْ فِي ذَلِكَ and he is satisfied he is satisfied um, with this and when he does this the shaykh mentions إِذَا فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ when he does this he satisfied that um, these events it lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's pleased with this when he does this قلبه, right he will have contentment when he does this places his trust in Allah and he um, is satisfied that Allah Azza wa Jal is sufficient for him as a disposer of his affairs Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil right Allah is sufficient for him as a disposer of his affairs when he does this his heart will be content then this will rectify for him the events that he is troubled over and Allah Azza wa Jal will remove from him his ham his worry and his distress and Allah Azza wa Jal will also Remove from him his qalq, his anxieties. Subhanallah. So two very, very important points the Sheikh mentions here is not uh, busying yourself with past events and replaying them and not becoming preoccupied with future events. The next point the Sheikh mentions under this chapter is وَمِنْ أَنْفَعِ مَا يَكُونُ فِي مُلَاحَظَةِ مُسْتَقْبَلِ الْأُمُورِ استعمال هذا الدعاء الذي كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يدعوه به and he says amongst the most beneficial things to do concerning the future of one's affairs and one's life is to use um, to use a specific dua which the prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام used to supplicate with 
to use a specific dua which the Messenger of Allah والسلام, used to supplicate um, with. And generally, dua is a means and it is a great means of achieving happiness and removing sadness and grief. And if you were to summarize what dua is, dua is either asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for some form of naf, for some form of benefit, or it is asking Allah Azza to avert from you um, some form of evil, which is the removal of grief and stress and sorrow and the likes of this. And so dua generally, it is a great shari means, it is a great means which the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affords the Muslims to take. And Allah Azza wa Jal even he responds to the supplications of the kuffar as well, right? When they call out sincerely to him. And that is a time of distress. However, the believer can utilize this to obtain benefit and to ward off harm. And so, a specific dua which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu supplicated with is a supplication that all of us should memorize. Um, and it is known as um, the dua wherein the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Allahumma aslih li dini alladhi huwa ismatu amri wa aslih li dunyaya allati fiha ma'ashi wa aslih li akhirati allati ilayha ma'adi وَجَعَلِ الْحَيَاةَ زِيَادَةً لِي فِي كُلِّ خَيْرِ وَالْمَوْتَ رَاحَةً لِي مِنْ كُلِّ شَرْ which has been reported in Muslim. A very very important supplication that a believer must say on a daily basis. So what did the Prophet also supplicate for in this dua? He said, Allahumma, and that is him calling out to Allah Azza wa Jal and saying, O oh Allah, Allahumma, O oh Allah, أَصْلِحْ لِي دِينِ أَلَّذِي هُوَ عِسْمَةُ أَمْرِي O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, Rectify for me my religion, which is the protection and the safeguarding of all of my affairs. And look at what the Prophet first supplicated for. He first supplicated for rectification of deen. And why is that? Because by rectification of one's deen, a person's dunya, a person's dunyawi life will be rectified. As we can see from all these means that was mentioned, when a person has the right outlook with regards to um, events of good fortune, he gives gratitude for what Allah Azza bestowed upon him, and he gives shukr to Allah Azza for that and utilizes it in the bounty of Allah, then more happiness comes about. And um, if the person goes through difficult um, events, and the person is patient and he deals with the event accordingly, then that is also good for him. And this is when the person has the correct outlook with regards to the good decree and the bad decree, which only comes about as a result of the rectification of one's religion. By rectification of one's religion, by rectification of one's belief. Because this puts um, things into true perspective for the individual. And so the Prophet first supplicated for rectification of his deen. And he then said, وَأَصْلِحْ لِي دُنْيَايَ الَّتِي فِيهَا مَعَاشِي And rectify for me uh, my dunya الَّتِي فِيهَا مَعَاشِي Which is the place wherein I live. Right? And our life in the dunya, it will only be for an appointed time. Right? It will only be for an appointed time. And so we supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal to rectify for us our worldly life that is an appointed term. It is not Darul Qarar, meaning the abode wherein we will abide for all eternity. Right? The average lifespan of the Ummah of Muhammad, peace be upon him, is 63 years. After that, subhanAllah, it can be seen as borrowed time. But your life in this dunya ultimately um, will determine your outcome in the akhirah. Will you be of Ahlul Jannah or will you be of Ahlul Nar? We ask Allah as well to make us from the people of Jannah. Ameen. And so 
A worthy life is our mazra'ah lil akhirah. It is the place where we plant our seeds, which uh, we want to see the fruits of in the year after. As the Prophet Muhammad said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ طَالَ عُمْرُهُ وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ The Prophet Muhammad said that the best of you are those who have a long life. We always supplicate, may Allah Azza wa grant you a long life, right? May Allah increase you in Umar. But we should add as well to this, it should be coupled, we should say, in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as the hadith mentions, it mentions the best of you are those who have a lengthy life وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ And his actions are also good. So a long life must be coupled with good actions. The more Allah Azza wa increases you in age, the more you must increase in deeds. As for the person who lives a long life, but the person doesn't fill these years with Iman and he doesn't fill these years with righteous deeds, then that Umar, that life, it is against him. And Allah is only increasing him in his transgression. So the Prophet mentions, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ طَالَ عُمْرُهُ وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ The best of you are those who live a long life which is accompanied with good deeds. And he, he does good deeds. So as our days increase, our actions should increase as well and we should make our scale of good deeds heavy. And so the Prophet says, وَأَصْلِحْ لِي دُنْيَا يَأَلَّتِي فِيهَا مَعَاشِي The Prophet then says, وَأَصْلِحْ لِي آخِرَتِي أَلَّتِي إِلَيْهَا مَعَادِي And rectify for me my year after. And your year after can only be rectified if your dunya is rectified. And rectify for me my آخِرَةِ أَلَّتِي إِلَيْهَا مَعَادِي Which is my true abode, right? And the place where I will be for all eternity. Rectify for me my year after. Uh, wherein is my final abode. And make life an increase for me in all forms of goodness. And make death a ease, a form of ease for me and a way out for me from every form of difficulty. That you do not want to be trialed with a trial so great that it overcomes you in your deen. And so you ask Allah Azza wa Jalla, this is a powerful supplication. That we don't want to live long lives, we want to live lives which are meaningful. And lives which is spent in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْمَوْتَ رَاحَةً لِي مِنْ كُلِّ شَرْ And make death a form of relaxation and a way out for me from every form of difficulty. And so this is a great dua and a great supplication with regards to this specific um, topic. And that is a means of obtaining happiness and warding off grief and sorrow. As well as another supplication of the Prophet Muhammad which is known as Dua al karb The dua for the one who is in despair, the one who is in despair and the one who is encountering Great difficulty. Ya in the Prophet Muhammad said, Allahumma rahmatak arju fala takillani o fala takillani ila nafsi tarfata ainin wa aslih li sha'ni kulla la ilaha illa ant. As has been reported in Abu Dawud, be isnad in sahih within with a sound chain. And yet the Prophet Muhammad said, Allahumma rahmatak arju. O oh Allah Azza wa Jal. It is your mercy that I hope for. Allahumma rahmatak arju. O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, it is your mercy that I hope for. فَلَا تَكِلَّنِي إِلَى نَفْسِ طَرْفَةَ عِينٍ So do not leave my nafs, myself. Do not um, entrust my nafs to myself for even a blink of an eye. وَأَصْلِحْ لِي شَأْنِ كُلَّ And rectify for me all of my matters and all of my affairs. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتِ None has the right to be worshipped except you. 
So you're the Prophet asks Allah Azza wa Jal to not leave him alayhi salatu was salam for even a blink of an eye. And this refers to a very very um, as they say a zamanun yasir, a short moment. Blink of an eye it's a quick it's a quick moment that we have this expectation from Allah when we make this dua that he does not leave us for even a blink of an eye. And this is how we are dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the true believers, they know this, right? That we are dependent upon the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah azza wa jal should not entrust us to our own selves for even a blink of an eye because we only rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afia, for well-being. And so um, this dua indicates um, that the one who depends on himself, it will lead him to his destruction, you know. Um, if the person's heart is void of tawakkul, he will feel that whatever he has in his position, it is as a result of his own striving. You know, he'll be like, I achieved this, I bought this, you know. I paid for that. I um, got myself out of this situation. So he depends upon himself. Why? Because his heart is void of tawakkul. And tawakkul is from amongst the greatest um, acts of worship of the heart. Tawakkul is from amongst the greatest acts of worship of the heart. And so the person who depends on himself, he is, he is void of this great ibadah of tawakkul and so the believer knows and he recognizes that in order to obtain Allah as which of mercy in dunya and akhirah he depends upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times and he does not depend upon himself to obtain goodness and to ward off evil وأصلح لي شأني كله and rectify for me all of my affairs dunya and akhirah and rectification of affairs is all inclusive and this includes um, obtaining happiness and it includes warding off um, shar, warding off evil la ilaha illa ant and there the prophet makes affirmation of tawheed but this is the approach of the people of tawheed the people of sound belief the people of um, the aqidah the belief system of the prophet muhammad La ilaha illa ant, none has the right to be worshipped except you or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentions, فَإِذَا لَهِجَ الْعَبْدُ بِهَذَا الدُّعَاءَ الَّذِي فِيهِ صَلَاحُ فِيهِ صَلَاحُ مُسْتَقْبَلِ الدِّينِ وَدُنْيَوِي بِقَلْبٍ حَاضِرٍ وَنِيَّةٍ صَادِقَةٍ So he mentions that when the abd, when he makes this specific dua, the abd makes this specific dua, um, wherein lies the rectification of um, his future in terms of his deen firstly and in terms of his dunya and he supplicates by way of this dua بِقَلْبٍ حَاضِرٍ and he makes this dua with an, an attentive an attentive heart right because Allah Azza wa Jal does not respond to du'as when a person has an unmindful heart. Rather, you know the meaning of what you're supplicating for, you know the Arabic, you know its meaning, and when you supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal, you mean this from the deep recesses of your heart. It's not just something which you utter with your tongue, right? Just a du'a which you rattle um, off your tongue easily. And um, he has khusnul dhan. He has good thoughts of his Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala who said وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبُ لَكُمْ When your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala said أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبُ لَكُمْ Supplicate to me and I will respond to you. And so he has khusnul dhan. He has good thoughts of his Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah Azza wa Jal will actualize for him what he supplicates for. And this is key that he has an attentive heart. وَنِيَّةً sadiqa, And he also supplicates to Allah Azza wa Jal with a sincere intention. 
مع اجتهادي فيما يحقق ذلك حقق الله له ما دعا ورجاء وعمل له وانقلب همه فرحا وسرورا so he mentions the sheikh mentions رحمه الله تعالى that when he does this with an attentive heart and he does this with a sincere intention مع اجتهادي فيما يحقق ذلك and he also um, strives and he takes the prescribed means which would cause him to obtain happiness and to avert from him grief and sorrow he mentions حقق الله له ما دعاه then Allah Azza wa Jal will materialize for him what he supplicates for and what he hopes for وعمل له and what he has worked for so uh, part of the ayat you mentioned it is taking towards the means that the person must take towards the means of that which he supplicates for but he doesn't turn towards the means right he doesn't turn towards the means he takes the means because Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered him to take the means so he he also works right actively and he works um, proactively to obtain that which he makes to ask for then Allah Azza wa Jal will grant him what he's applicated for and that which he hoped for وَالْقَلَبَ هَمُّهُ فَرَحًا وَسُرُورًا and then as a result of this Allah Azza wa Jal will turn his ham, his sadness Allah Azza wa Jal will turn it into farahan wa surura Allah Azza wa Jal will turn it into happiness and he will turn it into joy for this person um, the next chapter the Shaykh uh, Rahim wa Ta'ala brings it is the chapter uh, regarding the most beneficial means to remove al-qalq the most beneficial means to remove anxiety and sadness إِذَا حَصَلَ عَلَى الْعَبْدِ مِنَ النَّكَبَاتِ when these things occur anxiety actually occurs and when events which cause one to despair and cause one to be sad when it actually occurs how to approach them right so this is with regards to when the calamity strikes and if a believer accepts that this world it is um, a passing through it is not his eternal and everlasting abode and the person the believer accepts that this dunya it is fania that this dunya it will it will perish and it will come to an end um, so if he is afflicted with some form of difficulty and after this um, difficulty uh, strikes him, he takes towards the means which Allah Azza wa Jalla has guided us towards in his book and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in terms of sabr and in terms of prayer, as Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَىٰ that seek the help of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala by way of sabr, uh, patience, وَالصَّلَىٰ and uh, the prayer. And they take towards means like this, right? They also uh, couple this um, with taking towards the means which would actively remove it. So this is a great method, sabr and salah. But they also take towards those physical means um, that they can utilize in order to remove from themselves um, grief and sorrow. And so, uh, once again, uh, we mentioned that taking towards the prescribed means in order to um, gain something or in order to remove something difficult from your pathway is something which Allah Azza wa Jal has legislated for us. And it is something which we hold as a belief, taking towards the means. And we gave examples of this previously. So, Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentions, وَمِنْ أَنْفَ الْأَسْبَابِ And from amongst the most beneficial means, لزوال القلق والهموم إذا حصل على العبد من النكبات to remove anxiety and to remove um, grief إذا حصل على العبد من النكبات when calamity strikes when مصيبة strikes أن يسعى في تخفيفها 
بأن يقدر أسوأ الامتحانات أسوأ الاحتمالات التي ينتهي إليها الأمر. So he mentions is that the servant must strive actively and proactively to listen, to listen the calamity. So the calamity strikes, so you strive actively to um, to to lighten, to lighten the calamity. And we mentioned this previously as well um, that. Usually when people face a difficult situation of grief and sorrow and depression, the person usually is inactive and the person usually uh, would render the person incapable, right? How so? By not taking active means. Rather part of the sunnah of Allah Azawajal to remove this from the individual, it is towards, it is to take towards uh, the practical means and to also take towards the physical means which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us towards. So he mentions that uh, the servant strives to listen this بأي يقدر أسوال احتمالات التي ينتهي إليها الأمر is that he should visualize the worst possible outcome which could have occurred. So the person was in an accident Right? And the accident was a write off. The car was written off. MashaAllah, the person just purchased the car, brand new out of the box. MashaAllah, the person then is in the accident. And as a result of this accident, the car is write off. However, the person himself is sound, Alhamdulillah, unscathed, MashaAllah. And the person is not physically harmed. When the person visualizes this, um, this is a form of listening the calamity. This is the form of listening the outcome of the calamity. Okay? This is the form of listening the outcome of the calamity. So the person looks at his car and he grieves. He spends so much money on this car. But the person himself, Alhamdulillah, is unscathed. And so this listens, right? This listens the calamity. He also mentions وَيُوَطِّنُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ نَفْسَهِ And he should try to put up with a difficult situation. He should try to, so to say, fight it. He shouldn't submit to it. Right? He should try to listen it and he should try to take towards the means which cause the difficulty to be removed. He then mentions فَإِذَا فَعَلَى ذَلِكَ فَلْيَسَعَ إِلَى تَخْفِيفِ مَا يُمْكِنُ تَخْفِيفَ بِحَسَبِ الْإِمْكَانِ and so when he does this, فليسع, let him strive to listen ما يمكن تخفيفه, what is possible for him to listen and to lighten بحسب الإمكان, which all goes back to his own ability. So whatever means you have at your disposal, you take towards that means to listen the calamity. فبهذا التوطين وبهذا السعي النافع and so he mentions um, approaching um, calamities uh, in this way by trying to put up with it and by striving actively to remove it تزول همه وهمومه by way of this his hum, his sadness and his غم and his grief will be removed وَيَكُونُ بَدْلُ ذَلِكَ السَّعْيُ فِي جَلْبِ الْمَنَافِ وَفِي دَفْءِ الْمَضَارَةِ الْمَيْسُورَةِ لِلْعَبْدِ So when he does this, um, Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentions that he will have used his energy in achieving what is beneficial for him and warding off what is harmful within normal, normal human ability. That when he does this, he will be striving actively to remove uh, this calamity which all goes back to his own human ability. And so, while we can see that these points that Sheikh Abdul Rahman mentions, it is very apt, mashallah, and it is very on point and it is practical. And this is what the Sheikh mentioned that in this book he will mention to us 
some means which is mentioned to us in our deen which we can take to um, achieve happiness and to ward off grief and will also mention to us practical means um, which we can benefit from which um, aids us in achieving the goal of achieving happiness and warding off grief and sorrow so we should make a firm intention and a firm resolve to practice upon these points in achieving happiness and warding off grief and sorrow and harmful events when they occur. We end on this step inshallah and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grants us happiness fi dunya but more so happiness in the akhirah which is ultimate and eternal happiness. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.